Hello grade 7 students, in this video we will start about respiration part 3. Before we start, we have to go through some revision about the respiration in human and in some insects. You have to know that the respiratory system of human composes different organs, mouth, the nose, pharynx, the larynx, the trachea and the lungs. The lungs, they represent the most important organ throughout the respiratory system of human. So the pathway along the respiratory system includes the nose, the pharynx, larynx, the trachea, the bronchus, the bronchioles, and the alveoli. Breathing, as we said, is the actual mechanical intake of air. Breathing consists of two different phases. Number one is called inhalation, and number two is called exhalation, and they represent what's known by the respiratory movements. Inhalation is the process of taking air inside the body. That's why it's called inhalation. While exhalation, releasing air outside the body, air will exit outside the body. So thoracic cage during inhalation, it's raised, while during exhalation, it's lowered. State of the lungs, they are be inflated, they are full of air, while during exhalation they are deflated. Volume of the thoracic cage will increase, while in the exhalation it will decrease. Pathway of the air during inhalation comes from outside the body, from the environment, to inside, while during exhalation it moves from inside the body to outside. Let's start about the respiratory movements in insects. So here let's talk about the respiratory movements of grasshoppers. In the first figure, the abdomen is raised, while in the second, the abdomen is lowered. So you have to know first that during inhalation, the abdomen is lowered, while during exhalation, the abdomen is raised. The abdomen is lowered, the grasshopper has inhaled air, while during the exhalation, if the abdomen is raised, the grasshopper has exhaled air. So whenever you have lowered abdomen, we have inhaled air, while the abdomen is raised, we have exhaled air. So about the grasshopper, the body of the grasshopper is divided into three parts. The first part it's the head, the second is called the thorax, and here we have the abdomen. Pay attention, we have an important part in the abdomen, it's called the sparticles. They have an important role in breathing. So here air gets in through the sparticles and it will go out through the same way and also through the sparticles. You have to know that the air will enter through the sparkles and will move through the trachea where the trachea is the respiratory organ in all insects so till now we have two respiratory organs we have the lungs in mammals and we have the trachea in insects both of them mammals and insects they live on land so here is the time for the aquatic life fun so here the fish says it's my turn what about the fish has two important organs that are interfering in the process of respiration we have the mouth and we have the curriculum so here in the first figure the mouth is open while the operculum is closed so when the mouth is open and the operculum is closed the water will get into the mouth and we are in the inhalation process whereas in the second figure the mouth is closed while the operculum is open so here we are talking about the process of exhalation so the fish respire through this whenever the mouth is open and the operculum is closed we are talking about inhalation.
while when the up when the mouth is closed and the upper canal is open we are talking about exhalation so as a when the mouth of the fish is open while the upper canal is closed the water will flow into the fish and here we are talking about inhalation while during exhalation the mouth of the fish will be closed while the operculum is open here the water will flow out of the operculum so here we are talking about exhalation so what is the respiratory organ in the fish first it's the mouth no operculum no it's the gills so the gills they are respiratory organ of Respiratory movement allow the renewal of water or air in contact with the respiratory organ. So this is important of the respiratory movement, inhalation and exhalation. They allow the renewal of air or water. So new water will enter if it's an aquatic animal like the fish or new air will enter if it's an animal that lives on land like insects and mammals. So this will renew the air and new air or new water will be in contact with the respiratory organ for example in the mammals it's the lungs the trachea and the insects and the gills and the fish let's move now to activity two talking about the respiratory gas exchange so here the air gets in here the animals they will use oxygen so inhalation air gets in for the animals living on land like the insects and mammals while the air gets out through the process of exhalation while the animals living in water water gets in during inhalation and water goes out during the process of exhalation so inhalation where the air or water they get in while exhalation is where the get air gets out or the water gets out so here we are talking about the respiration or the respiratory movement inhalation and exhalation so this is an important diagram that shows whenever the air gets in we are talking about inhalation and when the air gets out we are talking about exhalation while when the water gets in and the animals living in water aquatic animals also we are talking about inhalation so in always we are talking about inhalation out it's going about exit so exhalation here we have some questions when animals or plants respire what happened to the air or the water around them what happens to the gases what do they absorb from them do they absorb oxygen do they consume oxygen or do they absorb carbon dioxide what do they release? Do they release oxygen or do they release carbon dioxide? This is the big question here. What is the gas consumed and what is the gas released? So what is the respiratory gas exchange? Let's answer this question before we move to an important application. What is the respiratory gas exchange? Respiratory gas exchange is the passage of respiratory gases the gases that are either consumed or released between air or water and their respiratory organs so this is the definition of the respiratory gas to change it's the passage of respiratory gases not any gases the respiratory gases mainly they are oxygen and carbon dioxide between air and water or water maybe it's air if it's living on land or water if it's living in water it's aquatic animal and the respiratory organs whether they are the lungs in mammals trachea in insects or the gills in aquatic animals like the fish so which gases are the respiratory gases to answer this question let's so let's move to this application or this experiment here we have a fish that's placed inside 
eta C tube is connected to a device that measures the amount of different gases. So the aim of this experiment, aim also is called the objective and also it's called the purpose. What is the aim or the objective or the purpose is why do we do this experiment? This experiment is done to study the respiratory gas exchange in fish. So this is called the aim or it's called the purpose or it's called the objective. All of them, they have the same meaning. Objective, aim or purpose. All of them, they have the same meaning. Here we move to this activity respiratory gas exchange and this table showing the variation of the quantity of oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitrogen gases in water in milliliter as a function of time in minutes. So always the one in the table above should be down in the graph. So we want to do the graph on the x axis we have the time in minutes. And in the y-axis, we have the quantity of gases. So always the one on the top will be down on the x-axis. And the one on the top should be down in the table, which is the quantity of gases, either oxygen or carbon dioxide and the nitrogen gas. Here, as you see, as the time increases from 0 to 6, what happened for the oxygen gas, the quantity of oxygen gas in water, in milliliter this is the unit here okay so the one quantity of oxygen it was 7 then 6.6 .6, then 6.4 then 6.2 then 6.1 then 5.8 then 5.6 the quantity is decreasing while that of carbon dioxide it was a 3 3.2 3.3 3.5 3.8 4.5 4.6 and 4.1 so it's increasing why that of nitrogen gas it remains the same it remains constant it doesn't change it stays at 19 milliliter so here we can say that oxygen gas decreases carbon dioxide increases let's move now to the questions what we need here to transform this table into a graph we have to interpret what would you deduce Let's remember together what is interpret. Interpret, it's analyze plus indication. You have to say this indicates that. So this is interpret. Analyze plus an indication. So let's transform this table into a graph. We will start one by one. First, we will start with the oxygen gas. The amount of oxygen is decreasing. From time zero, it was seven milliliter. Why? After six minutes, it decreases to about 5.6. So this is for the oxygen. We gave it the red color. Here on the X axis, we have the titles, time in minutes. And for the Y, quantity of gas in milliliter. Why did I say, for example, quantity of oxygen gas? We have different gases. We have oxygen. We have carbon dioxide and also we have the nitrogen gas. Okay, that's why I didn't mention the name of the gas. So here first we have the amount of oxygen gas as the time increases from 0 to 6. This is the analysis for this one. So as the time increases from 0 to 6 minutes the quantity of oxygen gas decreases to reach the minimum value minimum which is 5.6 milliliter this is for the oxygen and here I used the red color for the oxygen and also we'll give it the legend at the end so first we give the title for the axis time and minutes quantity of gas also we give it a scale so every one centimeter on the x axis it represents one minute and every one centimeter on the y axis it represents one milliliter so if i give it the scale on x axis 
one centimeter it gives one minute while on y-axis every one centimeter it gives one milliliter or if you're gonna use a graph paper you can do it every one centimeter like this and on the x-axis it's one minute or on the y-axis it's one milliliter either you can use this one or use this one for the scale not both only one of them okay here is the title a graph showing the variation the quantity of oxygen carbon dioxide and natural gas in water in milliliter as a function of time here we finish first for the oxygen gas let's move now for carbon dioxide carbon dioxide i use the green color the quantity of carbon dioxide at time zero it was three milliliter while after the time moves to about six the amount of oxygen gas it decreases to it increases sorry it increases to reach about 4.1 so this is 4.1 which is the maximum value in this gas so you have to say that as time increases the quantity of carbon dioxide it increases to reach the maximum the highest value which is 4.1 at time equals six minutes so what does this indicate if we want to move for indication we move it at the end so this is the analysis as the time increases from zero to six minutes the amount of carbon dioxide increases from three to reach its maximum which is 4.1 now let's move for the nitrogen gas the nitrogen gas it's the one in blue so here we gave the legend the one in the blue is the nitrogen in the green the carbon dioxide in red it's the oxygen carbon dioxide it's increasing the oxygen gas it's decreasing what does this mean this means it's the oxygen gas it's consumed by the plant by the fish while the carbon dioxide it is released that's why it increases while the nitrogen it remains the same it remains the same at 19 here I use something special in the graph since I don't have enough space so I put dashes here while you on the graph paper you have to draw 7 then you have 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 to reach the 19 here I don't have enough space so I put a dash and then 19 since I don't have enough space to draw the 19 okay so here the 19 it's constant it doesn't change it remains constant what's the meaning of constant constant meaning that it doesn't does not change it remains the same so the amount of nitrogen it remains the same at the time increases from one to six what does this mean this means that the nitrogen gas is not released or it's not absorbed by the fish meaning that nitrogen it's not a respiratory gas so let's interpret at time zeros the quantity of oxygen carbon dioxide and nitrogen gases in water they were seven three and 19 milliliter respectively what does this mean the first one with the first number that's the meaning of respectively so respectively means that one for the first number so the amount of oxygen were seven carbon dioxide it was a three nitrogen gas it's 19 milliliter this is the mean of the word respectively so you can use it from now on instead of saying the quantity of oxygen was seven milliliter and the quantity of carbon dioxide was in water was seven milliliter and the quantity of nitrogen gas in water was 19 milliliter so you can use the quantity of oxygen carbon dioxide and nitrogen gases in water they were seven three and 19 milliliter respectively so number one oxygen here for the first number which is seven number two carbon dioxide is the second number which is a three and number three the nitrogen gas which is the third number 19. as the time passes from zero to six the quantity of oxygen gas it decreases to reach the minimum value 5.6 after six minutes this is the analyze 
okay here we need interpret so we have to add for the analyze the indication so here the indication this one it's the indication so what does this indicate it's called the indication this indicates that the amount of oxygen is decreasing so the fish is consuming oxygen gas so we can say that the oxygen is a respiratory gas since its amount is decreasing the carbon dioxide as the time passes the quantity of carbon dioxide it increases to reach the maximum value which is 4.1 milliliter after six minutes this is also the analyze so we need more than for the interpret we need the indication so what does this indicate it's the indication so always interpret it analyze plus indication so here this indicates that the fish why the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing so the fish will give carbon dioxide so the fish is releasing carbon dioxide from now on please you have to know the words consume and release from now on we don't have to say the fish is taking oxygen or the fish is giving carbon dioxide you have to say the fish is consuming oxygen and the fish is releasing carbon dioxide so here we can say that the carbon dioxide is a respiratory gas since its amount is increasing moving to the last one as the time passes from zero to six minutes the quantity of the nitrogen remains constant what well, the meaning of constant the same at 19 milliliter this is the analyze what do we need for interpret we need the indication so what does this indicate this indicates that the fish neither consumes nor absorbs nitrogen so nitrogen is not considered as a respiratory gas since it's not consumed neither it is absorbed so here what we did use we did use that the fish inhales oxygen it consumes the oxygen since the amount of oxygen is decreasing so the fish is inhaling or it's consuming oxygen while it exhales carbon dioxide or it releases carbon dioxide since the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing so this you can know that the respiratory gases they are oxygen o2 and carbon dioxide co2 while nitrogen gas is not a respiratory gas since it's not absorbed neither it's released so you can deduce from this that oxygen and carbon dioxide they are the respiratory gases oxygen it's inhaled by the fish since its amount is decreasing while the carbon dioxide is released by the fish since the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing thank you guys bye bye